Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check it out Orleans Trade and Intrigue, the expansion to the immensely popular Orleans that is for one to five players. Take about 90 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 plus. And Orleans Trade and Intrigue is going to add some new modules to the game that will add, well, a lot of trading and a lot of intrigue. It also potentially adds some take that to this Euro game. Orleans is one of my favorite games of all time. I slapped a Bowers Best Seal on it. Does this make it better? Does it make it worse? Or is it, does it make it about the same? Let's open it up. I'll tell you what I think. All right, then. We're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Orleans Trade and Intrigue. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule booklet. It's one really long page, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. And it's pretty well done. There's two notable omissions in here, two problems that I do have in this rule booklet. And I will mention them as we progress. But overall, very well done. Should have you up and running pretty smoothly. And I can teach you how to play with the expansion right now. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention I'm not going to be going over the actual gameplay of Orleans or anything like that. We're just going to be talking about what new you were going to get in this expansion. So, first, we have the trade orders. And these are pretty simple. You're going to shuffle this up. You're going to deal out five cards. And how this works is if you end your turn on this location with these goods, you can turn in the goods, get this card, and bada boom, you get 13 points at the end of the game, 15 points, uh, 22 points, 8 points. Lots of various different things you can turn in in different locations, and they will score you points for the end of the game. So just another way in this game to score points, which already has a ton of different ways to score points. Next, you are going to have the new events, and there are tons and tons and tons of these events. Now, here's one of the qualms that I had with the rule booklet, is that you're going to get two of these Silentiums, which I assumed meant nothing was going to happen, and that was based on my previous knowledge of Orleans, the, the base game. Uh, but it doesn't specifically say in the rule what Silentium means, but it means you do nothing. But how this works is, they're going to have various different backs on them. They'll say A, B, C, or D, and you're going to take four from each stack. Now, when you start with the A's, they'll be, yeah, they'll be pretty typical ones, but then you'll progress to the B's, the C's, and the D's. And as you progress through the pile getting to the D's, drastically different things are going to happen. This really switches up the game. Uh, and you will need the rules for this because a lot of them, the symbology is not exactly, you know, self-explanatory. Uh, but we'll take a look at a couple of them right here. So you got your typical ones like taxes, pay three taxes. A lot of them will make it so that you can't make specific types of characters. Before, you couldn't make the monks. Now this one, you can't make craftsmen, knights, scholars. Uh, sabotage, technology fails this round. You may not take any actions that have a technology tile on one of their action spaces. That one really screwed me over one game. Uh, malfunction, that's where you're going to lose one of your technologies. Uh, torture, where you have to do five torture and you can't pay coins. Uh, you know, the pe ple Peasant Uprising is the one I showed there where the white ones are going to count as anything except for the uh, the monks. You know, famine and harvest, except it's double harvest kind of, where you have to give up two goods. Lots of various different things. Technology taxes, summoning, where everyone's going to have to go back to Orleans, so they're going to have to pay five coins. This will wildly make the game different, uh, especially the events. The events in the original game were pretty straightforward. These ones, you never are sure what's going to happen because it's always randomized at the beginning of the game. So those are the events that you can use. And if you use these, you will not use any of the events from the original game. You will use only these. So, next new thing you're going to get in the game uh, is going to be this card right here. And I actually want to mention this card. It's not mentioned in the rule booklets, but this card is fantastic. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to have on the board when you're playing with two, three, four, or five players. Just a nice little added addition. Anytime I don't have to go to the rule booklet before I start playing is a big thumbs up for me. So, huge thumbs up on this card. But let's get back to the actual uh, new game stuff. So first, you're going to get these three new technology tiles. One, two ones, and a two. So the two is the sheep farm. This is going to allow you, if you put a farmer here, to turn a cheese into a wheat. Or not a wheat, excuse me, a, a wool. Four coins or three books. So a cheese for three books, I mean, that's, or four victory points, that is absolutely huge. Next, we have the Merchant House, and this is one of the other qualms that I had with the rule booklet. They don't specifically tell you what happens in the case of a tie. I assume you have to have the most, but how this works is if you purchase this, uh, if you have the most grain at the end of the game, you'll get four points. If you have the most grain and the most wine, you'll get eight points. So for the materials that you have the most of at the end of the game, you're going to get four additional bonus points, which adds another strategy of just completely hoarding all the goods you possibly can to the game. 
uh, and I actually won doing that as well. I just went around the board. I made it so that I could go fast. I got the, what was the horse carriage and I put technology on it. So essentially I was just flying around the board. Like every turn almost, I was going two roads and one water and just picking up tons of goods and I won that way. So next we have the brazier. In my opinion, the most interesting one there. You're gonna get two cheese and you're going to get two wine immediately. So when you build this, you'll get two cheese and two wines from the supply and then you're gonna place them on here. Now they count as regular cheese and regular wine. You can use them for harvest. You can just keep them and use them for end game scoring, whatever you want. But if you're willing to get rid of a cheese or a wine when an event comes up that you don't wanna deal with, then you just say, boop, get rid of one of these that are on here and then you don't have to deal with the event. So essentially it gives you the option to negate four potentially bad events that you would have to deal with. Really interesting tile right there. But in my personal opinion, probably the stars of the show are going to be these two new boards that you're going to get. So these are going to replace the original town hall board. So you're going to have the, uh, the intrigue board and then you're going to have the trade board. So the trade board will go over first. The trade board has a lot of really cool spots on it uh, that are really different. So first, if you go up here, you'll get three coins. Last person to go there is going to get three coins. Alchemy, this is without a doubt the most complex of them. How this works is you will put your guy onto one of these spots and then you will draw another guy out of your bag and you can play that that person immediately. And if that triggers an action, then you get to do that action. Now, why is that really important? If you have, say, a technology tile, uh, if you have a technology tile that you have blocked off and you only have to put one person there, you could do that technology tile. Let's say you make a silk and then you place somebody up here and then you reach you reach in your bag and you get the same guy out again, then you can make silk twice on a turn or you can do an action twice on a turn. I haven't seen it used too successfully in most instances, but it definitely has some really cool ideas, uh, potentials with the alchemy. Uh, towing service is going to let you move over the water. Obviously, you need a seaman and you get a person if you're the last person to do it. The sheep farm will actually have all these goods set up here at the beginning of the game. And as you place your dude on there, you will get those goods and you'll get two coins if you're the last person to play there at the sheep farming or the Thanksgiving. Uh, architecture. Wow, this one is huge. It's actually going to give you one of these dudes. Yes, those little points. Uh, which are just straight points at the end of the game. You put one of them there, you get it. And if you're the last person to do it, you are going to get to put a house on your location as long as there is not a house there. Uh, the town charter is going to allow you to get, yeah, one of these, one of these upgrades, the inventions or whatever. And you can get a one or a two if you are on the one or two level. So you actually have to follow the rules of where you are on the tech tree board. So if you are all the way at the end of the board, then you can get a one or two. If you haven't bought any of them, you can only get a one, but still really cool tile. Last, you can get a technology upgrade, which follows the same rules. If you're on the white spot where you can only put it on farmers, then you get this. You can still only put it on farmers. Down at the bottom, we have the Court of Lay Assessors. It's just going to get you a coin, but what's more important is the last person to do it gets to complete any action they want, which, you know, could be potentially huge. And down here, you get two books for going here and three books if you're the last person to do it. So it definitely spices things up with this board. And if you like spicy, whew, let's talk about this Intrigue board right here. This Intrigue board is just absolutely bonkers and it introduces an element of take that to the game. So if you go up here to the torture spot, then you're going to get a coin and everyone is going to have to deal with a torture in one way or the other. Maybe they lose a coin, maybe they lose a good, maybe they go down on the book track, any number of things that, that deal with torture. Right here is the tax collector. You go here and everyone is going to have to pay you two coins. Yeah. Uh, the hangman, you're going to get two coins and somebody else is going to lose one of their workers out of their bag. Yikes. Saboteur, you're going to get one coin and then you're actually going to remove someone's person, someone's uh, person from on their board. So let's say somebody was going to build a guild hall. You go to the saboteur spot, you're like, eh, you're not building the guild hall this time because I'm going to take this guy off and I'm going to put him in your bag. Uh, so yeah, really a jerk spot there. Kidnapper, one I really hate as well. This one, you're going to you get a coin and then you are going to be able to take someone to Orleans. So this potentially means someone could be going all the way down to the bottom of the board and you can set them back astronomically by, by kidnapping them. Uh, then you have fraud right here which is going to allow you to swap out one of your goods for one of someone else's goods. And yeah, so you can essentially just swap a one point for a five point there. 
And then we have the trader right here, which is going to allow you to move one on a track and move someone back one on a track, which uh, obviously kind of stinks as well. Uh, next, we have the arsonist down here, which will allow you to burn down someone's guild hall as long as you're on that spot. And then the spy, which will let you steal someone's technology, not just copy it, but actually physically steal it from them and put it onto that spot on your board. Kind of crazy stuff going on here, but that in a nutshell. Oh, one last thing I did want to mention is that there also are some tiles that they're still in the box. I forgot to grab them uh, that will just cover these spots. So if you're playing with uh, certain player counts, you'll cover those up. And for this is just three players plus. They're just little tokens that will go over there. But that in a nutshell is what you're going to get inside of Orleans Trade and Entry. And it's, it's, it's a random event. What more do you want out of a random event? Love them, love them, love them. Always will play with them. Next, we have this player aid card, which mm, it's fantastic. You'd a real MVP player aid card. Not really, but it's, it's fantastic. It just shows you what exactly you need each time you play the game. So if you're playing with a four-player game, oh, I only need uh, 17 knights, and I need 12 seamen, and it just helps you set up the game quicker. So huge thumbs up on that. Next, we have the three new technology tiles. I like all of them. I actually personally have used the Merchant House to win once. I tried it again, and it didn't succeed nearly as much. But then again, I tried a different strategy in addition to the Merchant House. Uh, the one thing I will say about the Merchant House, if you get this, you can't... It's really hard to deliver goods with orders, which is kind of a bummer, but still another way to score points and win the game. Always a big fan of that. I like the sheep farm as well. I think this is a super powerful one, just specifically because those books. I mean, man, getting three books per turn. Not to mention, if you're using the, the board with the alchemy, you can you can really score a lot of books with the sheep farm, so big fan of that. Then my favorite, though, is the brasserie, which is going to give you the two cheese and the two wine, and you can use those to kind of uh, divert disasters that are coming at you. Huge, huge fan of the brasserie, especially if you are playing with the, uh, the entry board, because, yeah, whew, lots of bad stuff will happen to you then. Now, let's talk about the two main boards, most likely what most people have come to see. So... I'm going to talk about the trade board first because the trade board is fantastic and I think most people are going to play with the trade board every single time. I think most people will just do that. They will replace their old board and they will get this board. It just has a lot of really cool options and really cool different ways and paths to victory. You know, it's going to get you goods. It's going to get you those people which are used as multipliers and get you technology and get you the, the, the little, uh, the, the little gad, the, the round gadget things. Really, really cool. Love it, love it, love it. I will always play with this. I don't ever foresee myself playing with the original board again. And I think I can safely say that. Now, let's move on to the Intrigue board, which I was very, very skeptical on. I've seen a lot of people say, nope, nope, nope. Just take that. Mix with Euro just, just doesn't generally work. And I was, I thought I was going to be in that same boat. But I will say, I played with this once, and I did only play with it only once, so I do want to specify that. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. You do have to go into it knowing that people will mess with you. And this kind of adds like a little bit of a catch-up mechanism, which I like and dislike at the same time. If someone is clearly running away with the game, which I have had that happen to me in this game before, two people drop two things on them, and that, that completely changes something up. Like... Let's talk about the strategy that I used to win with the Merchant House. My plan was to fly around the board and pick up absolutely everything I could. I was moving and moving and moving and moving. I'd move three times on a turn. You know, I was doing the alchemy to try and move potentially four times on a turn and picking things up. So heading back to Orleans with someone kidnapping me, that's a big deal. That's a way to mitigate my strategy. And I like this board because it allows you to do that. It allows you to be like, oh, I'm losing right now. I can maybe do this and screw this person over a little bit and catch up a little bit. And maybe if someone else screws them over and they catch up a little bit, I'll catch up a little bit. I feel like it makes the games a little bit more competitive. But that being said, I don't think I would ever go out of my way to play it. If someone else wanted to play it, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, let's play it. I enjoy it. But I still think the trade board is way better and more, more, I don't know. It's more true to the, to the Euro game, to this type of game. It's just, when you think of Euro games, you don't think of attacking people. You don't think of stealing people's technology and kidnapping them and, and you know, stealing their goods and all sorts of stuff like that. But that being said, it was not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I actually enjoyed playing with it. And every once in a while, I think I would enjoy playing with it. But I don't think I would like the game nearly as much 
as I do if I if this was the game that came with the board and you played with this every single time because it just man it really is discouraging when you got everything rolling and you're, you're on a gravy train with biscuit wheels and all of a sudden kidnap burn your house down I'm gonna burn your house down too and it's just like what I, I that you just essentially canceled out two turns of my game almost uh, but if you like take that and if you like euros definitely want to check that one out so orleans trade and entry overall thoughts if you like orleans this is a no-brainer get this it's just that simple the new uh hourglass tiles are spectacular i like the three new buildings i love the orders i love the player aid card i love the new trade board uh intrigue board that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing i don't think it's going to be too popular but it's still a nice change of pace overall definitely 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 uh, makes the game better the game was already absolutely outstanding so orleans trade and intrigue go get it if you like orleans pretty simple if you enjoyed this video please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know take that and euro games can you think of any other euro games that have like take that mechanisms in it i really can't off the top of my head uh so let me know in the comments below because i definitely would be interested in knowing like what is the most take that euro game i want to try that game the game that's like munchkin but four hours granted munchkin sometimes is four hours but you know what i'm saying then. and as always thanks for your time youtube